I'm Tom. And I'm Molly. Welcome to Forensic Gameology, hosted by ForensicGameology.com. Reviews for science. In seven minutes or less. Seven Wonders, a drafting game and a civilization building game. And the Seven Wonders title references that you can build one of the Seven Wonders. The Pyramids of Giza, the something of Halicarnassus. Okay, so I don't know the Seven Wonders. The, the, <laughs> the Gardens of Babylon. The Hanging Gardens of Babylon, oh, thank you. Me. The Light Tower of Alexandria? White House? White House? So, <laughs> you... Me either. They've got different sides, and as you build them up, they can get you points and special powers and special powers. And what you do is have a hand... Uh, you start with a hand of seven cards, and you choose one to keep, pass the rest, and then everyone can play that card or use it to get more money or use it to build up their wonder, and these cards will help you advance throughout the game. You got your resources, there's science cards, there's these civic cards, and commerce cards, and military cards. There's a lot of different symbols going on in this game, all with the goal of getting the most points at the end through having the best civilization, the best wonder. Simplicity versus complexity. <laughs> I only laugh because I've been having a hard time remembering that. So... This game seems simple in that you pick a card, you play it, and you pass it. And it has a cost in this corner, right? So easy enough, the cost is here. It's either resource or money or, mo or some combination of that. But it, there are so many symbols and so many ways to get points to know what to actually do is actually quite complicated. So because of that, it's complicated. After you play it a couple times, it becomes easy again, and it's a very simple, quick game. You know, the very first time I played this, I was completely lost. And at the very end of the game, we scored everything, and we counted it up and saw who won, and I thought, now I know what to do. So I would definitely see people, even with a really good explanation, just being really lost in their first play. It is complex, and it's complicated, but after the first play, I could see you being like, okay, now I know what to do, and then from then on being competitive. Luck versus strategy. Well, I mean, there's a lot of luck in this game. You're depending on uh, making really important choices early in the game with no information. I mean, you have some information, you know what's in your hand, but that, depending on the number of players, it may not come back around to you. So, you've, you've got very little information, you're making important decisions. Are other people going to be, are going to start playing the same strategy as I am? I'm going to have to pivot. Can I commit to, to military? Can I commit to science? And that luck can really mess you up. There's a lot of strategy in this game, especially the more you play and the more you recognize, you know, at the player counts, which cards are going to be in the game. Uh, have you seen this card? Is it important for you to burn it in, under your wonder or to get money so your opponents can't have it? Is, are there cards that you can safely give to your opponents? You know it's going to come back around to you and they won't be able to build it. And so if they don't burn it, you can build it. And if they burn it, they're going to lose cards. There's all sorts of strategy in this game. A big helping of luck, though. Yes, there's a ton of luck because it's drafting, and so you pick one, and you're not going to see that hand for a while, or you may never, depending on how many players there are. <clears throat> but I think there's a lot of strategy. Every wonder, we were explaining this to, to a, a semi-new player last night, and every wonder is different, but balanced, in a sense, that if you if you want to go go gear your game towards your, your wonder, then that would help you. And I did that last night, and, and, uh, and it helped me. And so I think there is there's a healthy amount of strategy as well as luck in this game. That's all I have to say about that. Fun versus boring. This game, I've really oscillated, in my opinion, on this game. At the very beginning, we got it, and I thought it was super fun. And then I, I just kind of got fatigued with how much that early decision-making can really mess you up. You're like, you really invest in, in a no-resource strategy and then your neighbors do too, and you can't buy from them. But they can buy from their neighbors, and so you're messed up. You can't put down any of the cards you need. So next time you invest in a heavy resource strategy, and so do your neighbors, and nobody buys from you, and you can play cards, but you're kind of money poor, and there's just, man, I really wish I hadn't done that, but those decisions are long past, and it really steered my course through this game. And those are just two examples. There's a lot of things, like if you try to go science or whatnot, and there's ways to mitigate it, don't get me wrong. In the end, I think this game is fun. You have to know what you're getting into. Is that a revelation it's to you? Surprise, yeah. Because I've been so anti yes, Seven Wonders. Yes, everyone knows Tom hates Seven Wonders. People do know that in our gaming group, but it is fun. I like playing it, and I especially like it after having read a strategy article on BGG, BoardGameGeek.com. Uh, not because of the strategy game, but because it convinced me that there is a lot of strategy here. 
I it's a huge article, and I just thought, you know, this is all luck. There's no there's no bones about it. But this the the author of the article really got to me where he was like, there are things you can do to mitigate your luck no matter what. And, I, and as I read the article, I thought, you know, he's right. There is strategy here, and that really helped bring this game back for me. And I enjoy playing it. I think this game is fun. It's never oscillated, and and how I've I found it to be fun. I like that once you get to a certain comfortability. If that, I'm going to make that a word. Comfort level? N- n- nope, comfortability. Comfortability. And uh, it says exactly what I wanted to say. That's the word I wanted to say. I'm glad you chose it. Yeah. So, with a game, then you can try to thwart your your neighbors. If you want to put something underneath here, like Tom mentioned, I'm not going to let you have that military. I'm going to try to control what science you get if I can, because it switches directions with cards, which way the cards go. Uh, so that that that's a fun element element of the game I didn't mention earlier in strategy. But I, 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 it's fun. It's quick. No matter how many players you play with, it's 30 minutes or less if you all know how to play. And so that, that's it's super fun game to build up and engine building type game. On the Board Game Geek rating system, what would you give it? Eight. That's so funny. Eight only? I thought you'd give this a ten. You love this game. I do love this game. Maybe I'd give it a no, nine. No, it's too late. You already said eight. You, I can't influence your decision. I would give it a nine. I know, I need to go change my Board Game Geek rating from like a 4. You have like a 3 on there or something. It was a 2. I was really not pleased with it. But I do enjoy it. The more I've played it lately, the more I enjoy it. Seven Wonders. We've presented the evidence. You be the judge. 